Hello everybody, thank you for watching another program of Messenger of Hope and this time we have someone very special. It is Apostle David MacDonald from America and he is the author of this book, A Sonship Revolution. And this time calls out for the Father Heart and for Sonship. And we are going to talk about that subject. So, Pastor David, you, uh, you told us already a little bit out of this book. Yes. And I would like to know what kind of passage in this book do you think is really appealing for people who are watching right now? I think chapter 8. Chapter 8. Um, the responsibilities of a spiritual father. Oh, wow. Now, we just you talked know, about that. So, I bit. think, um, you know, in this, in this scripture, you know, if you look at 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 14 to 21. Yeah. In this scripture, Paul referred to himself as a spiritual father. Yeah. And it's important that there's no ambiguity yeah. or misunderstanding in people knowing the function of a spiritual father. And we've got to look at this and realize that, yes. you know, we are responsible. Hmm. A spiritual father warns his children. Yes. You know, a spiritual father exhorts his children. Mm -hmm. And I think even if I can just speak into that a little bit, many times I meet spiritual fathers and unfortunately they recognize a weakness and they focus on the weakness instead of calling out the treasure. Exactly. But we all, we all have a weakness. Yes, but mostly it comes because we are raised like that. Yeah, we all raised. had someone who, who always look at the bad things. Absolutely. And <laughs> so the problem is, is when we see something that's weak in somebody, we're now focusing on the weakness. Yes. And that will never work no. in discipleship. No. Jesus had 12 hmm. men around him that were imperfect. Hmm. Can you imagine working with Peter? <laughs> Can you imagine knowing that Judas was stealing yes. the money? Yeah. But yet you were still gracious and merciful enough to keep him as part of the discipleship. Yeah. Matthew was uh, was an introvert, you know, uh, and so when you look at what Jesus was working with, but he was always calling mm. out the gold. Yes. And so, you know, um, a spiritual father sets an example for his children. Yes. A spiritual father disciplines his children. And yes. you know, that's one of the things in the body of Christ we don't want to hear. No. We don't like to hear the word discipline. No. No. But you know, a spiritual father <laughs> brings discipline, brings mm -hmm. correction. Yes. But there's a, a correction that is brought that builds up. We don't have to bring correction to break down and destroy. Yeah. And so I, I really want to recommend, you know, if you are in any way a leader that's perhaps listening today or yeah. somebody that wants to start a ministry or you want to start a discipleship program, yeah. I would honestly say this little book would be a asset to them. Yes. And the way they can order this book is yes, they can go important. to lulu.com. Lulu.com. We will put uh, this yeah. under in the screen so you can watch there and order this book. And if you don't, otherwise do not know how, then you can always send us an email uh, to United7 and we will help you with getting this wonderful book. It's all about sonship, how to be a father, and especially in this time, it's so important to yep. be a father and to, even for your own children, but also when you are a leader in your church, it's very important to read this book. It's not very thick. You can read it in one night, one day. Yeah. Many beautiful chapter, chapters in this book about the legacy of relationship, uh, fathers and sons arise. Yep. And you know, I especially believe in the time that we are entering, a time of harvest that is coming in, uh, the tsunami wave of the Holy Spirit who will want to hit this world. Uh, then especially sons and fathers are so necessary because there is a world. You know that in, in Belgium and the Netherlands, yep. uh, many people commit suicide, but that the average is 60% is between uh, 15 and 20 years wow. who do not want to live anymore. Wow. And if we can show the father absolutely, and be a father, we can save them and we can help them to... You see, Jerome, that's what the, the one truth that changed my life mm. when I heard the father's love for me. You said it, yeah. That moved my heart. Yes. 
And I've seen so many times where I'm speaking to young men and I just touch them. I just put my hand on their shoulder. Yes. And I just say, you are a blessing. Mm. I want to affirm you. Hmm. Young men have broken down and wept. Yeah. Many. Yeah. I can't tell you how many men. Strong yes. young men. Yes. 20 it's years true. old, 22 years yeah. old. I just pull them into hmm. my, my arms and tell them, you are such a beautiful hmm. son. Yeah. And they would say, for all my life, I never heard my father say that. Hmm. And so we've got to be, we, you know, we can be religious. We, yes. can, we can get up yeah. on a Sunday morning and we can preach. You a know, good message. A good really message. Good. Yeah. But we never touch anybody. No. We and never lay hands on anybody. Exactly. We, our sons and our daughters hmm. in this generation have to be affirmed. Yeah. We've got to affirm them. Yeah. We've got to give them recognition. Hmm. We've got to raise them up. We've got to bring, yeah. because let me tell you right now, Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, uh, uh, Estee Lauder, um, yeah. all these pop groups, they are spending billions of dollars. Yeah. They're investing billions to change the, 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 sub, the conscious minds of our children. Yes, exactly. They are spending billions. The church mm. is not spending anything. We're not taking no. the time. We're not spending the money. We don't have the resources. No. But everybody else is spending billions of dollars yeah. to reinforce in your children's mm. mind they can change. They can yeah. be whatever they want to yeah. be. And in, unfortunately, we are not taking the time no. to reinforce their identity. Exactly. And even as an individual Christian, how much yeah. time do you spend in the Word? <laughs> and the Word is saying... That, that it will transform your mind. Absolutely. It's the Word of God. It's the renewing of your mind. Yeah, it's the renewing of your mind. It's your, you know, I don't, pe I don't believe that people are inherently evil. No. I don't believe that. No. People can become evil. Mm -hmm. But when we are born as little children and we are little kids and yeah. we are growing up, I don't think they are evil children. I've never mm. met evil children. No. But when I, when I, what, the reason why I'm saying that is that all of us have the consciousness of God yes. inside of us. Yes. We as adults, we as parents have to become aware that we are responsible to mm. show the children. Yeah. That's why I love it when children minister to mm. me. Ex yeah. Because there's a purity, there's an yes. innocence. Yes. There, there's just a holiness yes. about children. I love yeah. that. You know, Jesus said, let the little children come, come unto me. me. Yeah. And so we as parents, and I want to speak to some parents today. You have a responsibility. Yeah. Create an environment in your house. You know, mm. I love the word ecosystem. Yeah. This is an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This doesn't look like a dancing studio. No. This is a TV studio. Yes. It's an ecosystem. Yeah. We can create ecosystems in yeah. our home yeah. by playing worship, yeah. by playing praise, by, yeah. by worship, by mm. praying. Your children see you pray. They see you worship. It's an ecosystem. Yeah. It is. And for them, it's easy then to integrate into yes. a church setting. Yeah. We create an, uh, the, the, the atmosphere of the supernatural. Yeah. My children, all of them can prophesy. Why? Because in our home, it was natural for them to be in the supernatural realm. Yeah. We've got to create that, my brother, in yeah, this season. Exactly. We've got to create that. I would love to know a little bit more about you, you became a Christian, and you hear the voice of God. But how did you receive the calling to be a pastor or an apostle? Well, you know, I, uh, I went to Bible school. So mm -hmm. after the military, I was in the military for uh, seven years. And after that, I worked a little bit here, worked a little bit there. Uh, and then I started my own business. I started mm. because I lived in Africa, South Africa. Yes. I started a safari business. Oh, really? Yes. So many people <laughs> wanted to go on safari, photographic safari. Yes. And so um, yeah, you had the, the car we where had the people car, were we had in a and bus. And my company was called Into Africa Safaris. Wow. And we had a nice uh, 15 seater bus. Okay. Took people back and forth. And together with your wife? With my wife, ah, Dee. Dee. Um, and whom I've been married to now 35 mm. years. When you met her, she was a Christian? She was a born again ah. Christian. Went to the same church I was going uh -huh. to, Rhema. Yeah. Went to Rhema, South Africa. And Is that from uh, the Rhema, Rhema Bible? Bible uh, yeah, Rhema Bible School. Yes. I, I went to that. Rhema Bible School, went to Rhema. Yeah. Met my wife at Rhema. Mm. And so we. Um, and so while I was at Raymond Bible School, mm -hmm. I realized I have a gift. Huh. Wow, this is a prophetic gift. Yeah. Because now I was around people that could identify with that. Yeah. And um, so I finished Bible school in, 90, uh, in 88. 
89, mm -hmm. 91, I went into full-time ministry. Yes. It was a powerful uh, experience yeah. because, you know, we were praying and praying and I, I said to my wife one day, I know I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into my business, make my business a success. And she said, no, God has called you. Yeah. You've been disobedient mm. to the call of God. Yeah. So I said to her, what must I do? She said, you've got to get into full-time ministry. Yes. Wow. And right there, <laughs> right in our living room, we went on our knees, we took hands together, wow. and we, Lord, we dedicate our life to you. Today, we're going into full-time ministry. Mm. <laughs> I had no invitations. But, yeah. There was no one knocking at my door. Nobody was calling me on the telephone, but we no. made a decision. Yes. Now, listen to what happened. About two hours after we made that decision, somebody knocked on my door. Wow. And they said, you know, um, we had a guest speaker coming. They, but mm. they've just canceled. We have all these people. Can you come and minister? Mm. I said, sure. That was about two hours after we said we are now in full-time ministry. Okay. I'm not looking back into the secular world. I'm going into full-time ministry. We went to the meeting and there must have been about 60 people. We ministered to them. I prophesied to them. And there was one man there. His name was Rafa Peturius. I prophesied to him. Yes. He fell on the ground, just lay there weeping. This man got up off the ground and he said this. He said, I want to tell you, God showed me that I need to support you. I'm going to give you 4,000 a yes. month rands. Those days, mm. it was a lot of money. Yeah. He said, I don't know why. but How, how many is that in dollars, euros? Well, 4,000 those days was about, was about $4,000. Yes. It was about the same. Yeah. 4,000 Rand. He said, God told me I need to support you wow. for, with 4,000 Rand a month and I need to buy you a car. So that was the day I said, I'm going into ministry. But you didn't know that when I, you made a decision to, that's it. to leave your business, that's it. knowing that you will not have any income, that's it. but still you decided, no, Lord, you're calling me. That's it. And so we were so wow. overwhelmed. Yeah. Then listen to this. That? He walked up to us. He gave us a blank check. Yeah. Blank. Yeah. He said, I want you to pay all your debt off wow. with this blank check. That is so amazing. And my wife was, oh, you don't understand. You know, mm. we have, he said, I don't care. Here is a blank check. The Lord told me I need to give you a blank check, pay all your debt. Yeah. And I'm going to give you 4,000 a month mm. and I'm going to buy you a car. Wow. In the first day. <laughs> and so That's we so knew amazing. that was God. Yeah. And uh, two weeks later, that same man came to my house weeping. He says, the Lord told me that you are planning your first ministry trip. I need to give you 15,000. Yeah. It's like, wow, because in the meantime, we were planning our first ministry trip up the, uh, the west coast of Africa. We were going to Namibia. Yeah. And we were praying, Lord, we need extra money. We yeah. need this, we need that, because we'll be away for a month. And uh, we're living by faith. There was no salary, no one. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. <clears throat> it's so encouraging. And to this hear man this. Wow. Uh, 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 supported us mm -hmm. for two years. So three years. Well, 91, 92, 93, 94. Three years he, wow. he supported us. Yeah. Until God spoke to us about leaving South Africa and coming to America. Mm. And God lifted us out of South Africa, took us to America, and we are still eating the two fish and the five loaves. <laughs> now that man has gone on to be with the Lord. Hmm. And God has taken care of us. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage people. Yeah. If God's called you to be in ministry, if God's given you a word, yeah. and, in, and you know that you know in your knower yeah. that God has called you, take the step of faith. Yes, exactly. You know, Dee and myself have now traveled to over 50 nations. We have started over 160 churches. Yeah. And uh, I train leaders all around the world. Hmm. You know, I've been on TBN. I've done many different things, written my first book. But the greatest success we've seen is planting churches. Yes. Training leaders, discipling people. Hmm. But it took one step of faith. It took me being obedient to my wife. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you say it right. Yeah, I was obedient. She said, she no, said it. you yeah. cannot go back into business. Yes. You have been called to be in ministry. Mm. You've got to step up into ministry. Wow. But I think you need a wife like that. Absolutely. You don't need a wife who says, well, no, you cannot do that because you need your salary. Let me tell you something. More people stay out of ministry because of fear. Yeah. 
And fear exactly. will close the door on ministry. Mm. And we had two little boys. We had, my one son was two years old. Daniel was two. Yeah. Jonathan was uh, just turning five. And uh, we left South Africa. We had $1,200 in our pocket. We had nothing. We gave mm. everything away. We yeah. came to the United States. We, we traveled. We went to Portland, Oregon. We traveled to uh, California. We traveled around and God spoke clearly to us and said, I want you to stay in the United States because I'm going to train you here. Yes. America would be the training ground. Mm. And so we stayed. And when we stayed, God opened the door. I remember people came and gave us furniture when yeah. we lived in Mobile, Alabama. Mm -hmm. People gave us furniture. Then we moved to New York. That church mm. blessed us. So at the end of the day, we saw the hand of God. Yeah. Grace is important to understand. Yes. When there's grace, there's favor. Yes. When we need to learn something. When the grace lifts, the favor will lift. Mm. So we've got to be consistently waiting on God. God, exactly. is this a season of grace? Yes. And God was training me. How do I minister? How do I interact? Mm. And then in, 19, in 2001, God said, I'm taking you to Brook Cherith. Yeah. Like Brook Cherith. Well, who went to Brook Cherith? Elijah. Yeah. And you guess where I was, our Brook Cherith was? Australia. Really? So God took us <laughs> out of America, moved us to Australia. Yeah. And Brook Cherith was my, God was, it was my season mm. of getting, uh, uh, God was, God was really cutting some things out of my life. You know, Brook Cherith is a place of, of, of cutting. <laughs> of cutting. <laughs> That's what it's called. Place yeah. of cutting. Yeah. Circumcision. Yeah. And so we lived in Australia for 12 years. I started a church there that became very successful. Mm. Uh, but the Lord spoke to my wife and said, tell your husband, I'm taking him back to America because the cutting is finished. Wow. And so um, I have such a grace, such a love for Australia. Mm. But we knew it was time for us to come to back to the United yeah. States. And, um, and the rest is history. But yeah. all I can say is hear the voice of God. Learn to hear the voice of yeah. God. And the way you learn to hear is read His Word. Yes, amen. And, and, um, and get around people that love the prophetic. Yeah. Don't get around people that hate the prophets. Yeah. They're not going <laughs> to teach you anything. No, no, Stay no. around people that love the supernatural. Yeah. Um, I, I cannot tell you what it, this is doing with me, especially because yesterday evening I was driving to film their, their program. And when I was on the way, God was saying, I did not ask you to do this. And God says, I want you to turn around the car and go home and just be prepared for tomorrow for the interview with you. Wow. So it gave me a little bit of strife. And then God says this, if you are not ready to let this go, I cannot give you what I have prepared for you. Wow. So you will miss out yes. of the ministry that God has prepared for you if you keep on walking wow. this path. And you are <laughs> confirming it. all what God spoke yeah. yesterday evening to me. It's such an encouragement. You see, we've got to learn to listen. Yeah. And I'm so glad I listened. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when I look back over these years, yeah. 25, 25, 26 years, yeah. 30 years, 35 years, there were times in my life I didn't listen hmm. and I had to go around the mountain. Yeah. And then there were times I responded immediately and I didn't have to go around the mountain. Hmm. So you learn at the end of the day, the, I've learned to wait upon the Lord. Yeah. Listen to your wife. Yeah. Listen to your spouse. Hmm. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Find it in the word. Now, I, I want to just say this, just bringing this to a close. Mm -hmm. I, there are six, there are seven principles of God's guidance. Yes, seven. seven principles. Now, there could be more, but I teach on seven principles yes. of God's guys. Number one, the spirit of God. Yes. Spirit confirmation. Yes. The spirit will speak to you. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the word confirmation, the word of God. So God's guidance, his word will guide you. Mm. The spirit will tell you the word will guide you. Yeah. Then we need the peace of God. Yes. The peace of God. Is, there needs yes. to be guidance in the whole exactly. area of peace. If there's no peace, don't go. So the Bible let, says that. Eh? Let peace be yes, your the umpire guidance. of your heart. Yeah. The next one is godly counsel. Yes. Godly counsel. If there's no counsel, find the counsel. Yeah. Then I always speak to people about 
um, circumstantial confirmation. Mm. You know, circumstances. Mm. And if there's no, if there's no, you know, you can look at the circumstances. If the circumstances are changing, uh, why, why is that door closed? What happened there? So God will even use circumstances. Now, yeah. out of all of them, circumstances are the most risky. Yes. Because we're not led by circumstances. Exactly. But God will use circumstances. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes. And then um, provision. Yeah. Provision. There has to be godly provision. Yes. And so if there's no provision, stop the boat. Yeah. Because God guides, God provides where he guides. Yes. God will not send you to another nation to starve to death. No. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the most important, the number seven, is prophetic confirmation. Yeah. But you'll notice I didn't put prophetic right there. Because many people just rely on the prophets. Yeah. No. First the spirit then the word, yeah. then counsel, then peace, then counsel, circumstances, provision, and then and the prophetic. Uh, prophetic. So those are seven mm. ways God confirms your story. Wow. Amen. Yes. And I tell people, well, at least let three or four of those things yeah. line up before yeah. you make any decision. Yeah. Did you have counsel? Is there peace? Yeah. Was there prophetic confirmation? Mm. Was there word confirmation? Mm. Uh, you know, did did you feel that was there provision? Yeah. Now you know we've we've been living, uh, we've been in ministry thirty five years. In thirty five years, I have not getting paid. I don't get paid. Yeah. I live by faith. Wow. What does that mean? It means I trust for the Father to supply all my needs. Amen. But the key principle is D and myself live from a platform of generosity. Yeah. Do you understand? So yes. a lot of people say, well, we just I have to get on television and I have to cry. No, I don't have to cry for people to give us finances. What we do is we live from a place of understanding how yeah. to give. Yeah. Living from a generos place mm. of generosity will open up the windows of heaven. Amen. And we'll never have to beg God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Wow. So I, I want to tell you, so it's been a great blessing just to sit with you. My Thank brother. you so much, uh, Apostle David, that you were here in, and we learned already so much. Confirmations, encouragement was there. And uh, if you like to know more about uh, Pastor David, then you can go to media.united7.tv. Click on the channels and there you see the channel with uh, many preachings, teachings of uh, Pastor David. Amen. Thanks again so much. It was a blessing to have you here. And uh, well, we're looking forward to the next uh, teachings with you on Amen. the Bible school. And uh, is there anything you'd like to say into the camera to people who are watching? Yes, I, I, you know, I want to just say this, that remember something, that you are valuable to God. you the mm. apple of God's eye. He loves you. You know, he sent the best heaven had. Jesus, his son, to the cross so that you could live in a place of rest and peace and abundance. And you know what? I just feel for some people this morning, God is releasing. God is taking away all the restrictions. Yes. God is taking away all those things that have restricted you. Those things that, that, that were barriers in your life. God hmm. is removing the barriers in your life for you to fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Oh, wow. Amen. Thank you very much, Apostle David. I love you, brother. Be blessed. I love you too, and we see each other again. Amen.